In tonight's Project Earth, between the land and the sea, you'll find the real heroes of our coast. Salt marshes filter water, prevent erosion, shelter creatures, and protect our cities and towns from flooding. But because of climate change and the rising seas, these wetlands could disappear by the end of the century. And now, a pioneering approach could give California's salt marshes a fighting chance. Ann Makovic reports. Near Monterey Bay, within the Elkhorn Slough Reserve, little flags mark the spot. Dense clusters of pickleweed seedlings. Here, this once lost salt marsh mm, that looks beautiful. has found a new chance to survive, even thrive, as the planet warms and sea levels rise. What we've done here at Hester Marsh is build tomorrow's marsh. This marsh will survive much longer than most of the rest of the marshes in our system. And then you have a tag there. Scientists there Monique not, Fountain and Kirstein Wasson, they are part of a groundbreaking effort to restore the marsh. We're pioneering this approach in California of building such a high marsh forward thinking for sea level rise. In the past century, California has lost more than 90% of its salt marshes. Climate change with its melting glaciers and warmer oceans promised to endanger the rest. Those that remain here at Elkhorn Slough are really low. And so with just a little bit of sea level rise, they're gonna drown. And it's just a really rare habitat that we don't wanna lose. Decades ago, farming and other human activity badly damaged the marsh, causing it to sink. This project seeks to undo the damage by elevating it with lots of dirt. We've built it up so high at the line of the king tides where it only gets tidally inundated on the very highest tides of every year. And that means it will be resilient for tomorrow and be ready to face quite a bit of sea level rise. So far, the project has moved roughly half a million cubic yards of soil. Most of the dirt comes from nearby hillsides where it's scooped up and moved by a fleet of trucks. They caravan to the restoration site where the dirt is dumped. Tractors then take the dirt and spread it, building up the marsh. It is a living laboratory. And we had a clean slate when the soil was moved in. We can learn so much about how marshes are developing. So it's really a unique opportunity. That is amazing. The project also involves revegetating the higher plain with thousands of plants that grow in salt marshes, including pickleweed. This year we've seen hundreds of thousands of pickleweed sprouting and settling out and sprouting in our in our new marsh, which is really exciting. The hope that these plants will establish roots, stabilize the soil, filter water, provide shelter, even sequester carbon. Well, this is what I'm both interested in and passionate about. I do like uh, looking um, to try and figure it out. University students Zianna Graves and Wesley Moore are monitoring how the restoration is taking root, and it gives them hope. Even if it's just something small, I can do something to better not only this area, but the world. By showing others how to give our salt marshes a fighting chance. Such great vision there. This project took a small village of dedicated scientists from all kinds of disciplines and 15 governmental agencies, as well as community volunteers to bring to fruition.